right now. They are, we have the second semifinals. Quickly have a look at the bracket to see how that looks like. The second semifinal match will be played by four incredibly talented players that made it through the group stage. That being Carl Jr., Bren, Binks, and Kappa. And let's start by giving a great introduction to the greatest of all time. So, yes, he is known as the greatest of all time, the French player playing for Solary. He is the five-time world champion. He's the five-time Serrator Cup champion. He's the defending world champion. Welcome in, Carl Jr. You can hold it if you want. So, okay, definitely seems like the crowd loves you right now. You also have all these expectations coming on it. Does it make you feel a little bit nervous knowing that everybody is thinking of you as the one that's gonna win it all? Of course, I'm nervous. I wanna, I wanna do good for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you have any final words you wanna say before we go into the match? I'll just give my best and that's it. Let's go Simple for Carl Jr. to the point for Carl. So you get set in. Let's bring up our next contender for the title. He comes from the Czech Republic. He's been in the scene for over 10 years competing. He's the 2018 world champion. Please welcome to the stage, Kappa. Now, Kappa, you had a bit of a shaky journey getting here in the group stage. You were looking a bit on the bad side of the bracket, but then in the last match you beat Pac to get into the semis. He just went to the finals. How do you rate your own chances of joining him there? I think my chances are just as good as Binks's and Brands. Obviously, one sport is sort of reserved already, but I think this, the fight for the second spot is very open and I'm ready to battle for it with my whole heart. <laughs> with his whole heart, give him your whole heart in the audience. And Kappa, let's see your best here on the stage. And we have another French player, the 23-year-old player playing for Carmine Corp a seven-time Serrator Cup finalist. Come up here, Bren! <laughs> Bren, you've also had a really strong show in the last couple of matches, especially with the map border. How do you feel about the other maps now? Did you train them afterwards when you got home? I tried to practice a bit the maps where I felt a bit, uh, you know, not very confident. So hopefully I can do good. I know they have a sick face on every map, so it's, I mean, do a break, you know. So I'll just try my best and hopefully it works out. I believe you can do it. We believe you can do it. Give a big hand for Bren. And the final player of this semi-final also coming in from the nation of France. Please give a warm welcome to Binks. Now, Binks, you are the youngest player in this playoffs at 19 years old, and the other players here that we're playing against are 26, 25. How does it feel to go up against such veteran players when you're kind of new at this at the stage? Um, it's really impress impressive to, to play versus Carl Jr., Spam, Pac, and I'm very happy to, to be here to play against them. Some uh, players here have rated you as a favorite to potentially win this tournament to get a between. Does that pressure get to you at all, or do you try not to think about it? Uh, no, no. But I think I'm not really favorite. Carl and Twin are just uh, too, too strong for me. Well, so. we will see if hopefully you can beat <laughs> them here. Please uh, have your seat, thanks. And with that, all the Faya Highlights are now set in. We are ready to get started. Let's get in to semi-final number two. Let's jump in it, Virtual. Let's go. So, once again, we are playing 
Uh, the same format, 120 points is what you need to get into that finalist position. And then all you need to do, well, all you need to do is get a one more victory. And then that finalist position or that final grand final position is going to be yours. It is, but we saw in semi one just how hard it can be to actually get there because the problem is, is that the others are going to deny you. They're going to try to stop you from becoming a finalist or from closing it out. Yes, that's, that's exactly it. three finalists at the same time. That happened the very last map. And also what happened in the last map is that all the players, they were so close to each other all throughout the, the match. And I'm going to see, I'm going to say I'm assuming the same thing is going to happen now. Because the thing is, you know, it's hard to even tell who's the strongest here. They all do amazing times. They all have their ace cards. Bren, really good on Buddha. Binks on the map that they're warming up on right now. Arctic, one of his best maps. Carl Jr., Good across the board, of course, but I think in particular maps like Nurlan, where it's just mostly yeah. raw pace is where he, his excellence shines. And then Kappa, he can certainly do a lot of things well here. But then, you know, on hard maps, he said he tends to like them. In the Grand League, he would often pick the hardest map of the map pack. And here, that would be Melee. And that's the thing, right? Because the hardest map of the map pack means that the other players are probably going to have a little bit of a slower pace. And if you have practiced that quite a lot, you can capitalize getting those points when it matters. You can, so whatever map is first, whatever the map order is, you're going to have to be ready to adapt because your best map could be coming up first and you know, you just get thrown into it. Absolutely, but yeah, so as you guys know or don't know, the, maps, the map order is completely random. The players cannot predict what maps are gonna be played right now. They're gonna be told in a second here in the in-game chat, but then they can try to strategize a little bit, I guess. Yeah, and you kind of have to accept that you're not maybe going to beat Brandon on Boulder, that's okay, but then where can you find the points? What's your winning ticket? Carl right? Jr. did have a strong pace on Boulder as well, though, in the rounds that we saw him play. But we only saw Carl Jr. play five rounds of Bodo on stage, where we saw Brent play, I believe it was 20. 20, and mostly the average was under 56 yeah. seconds on 20 rounds in a row. So, that so the consistency is definitely in Brent's favor. Yeah. It's uh, certainly a map where he is looking to get points, but you have to feel the pressure when you get to that map, right? Oh, this absolutely. is the one I'm supposed to perform on. What if it was? Yeah, this is the one. This, I get the points here, or it's going to be a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Bren, uh, formidable on the other maps too, but that really is his ace card. We're starting here, it looks like, well, on the map Bren, Salmon. Yeah, Salmon, yeah, but Bren did say that he'd practiced the other maps, so it's gonna be interesting if he can get the same consistency that I had on Bode on the other maps, because that would make Bren a formidable force to, to oppose. Yeah, and here you can see the map order, uh, we can tell you, we're starting on Salmon, we have Nulan right after, we have Arctic with the ice slide, Melee, the difficult map, and Blue. Quite a pace-heavy map pack in the start with really difficult maps near the ending. Uh, for the players or the viewers that see the map names, they might see that Meloy and Bode does have a, a letter in them. How do you pronounce that letter? It's a uh. uh. Yeah, it's like a Norwegian a, letter. Uh. Uh. The chat got it right, the crowd got it right. Uh, kind of like, uh, like you're almost throwing up kind of well, thing. Well, it's not quite Danish. Danish is, I would argue, worse at every level when it comes to... We, okay, you just said it was uh. In Danish okay. it's uh. So, right? Danik, so, how about you inform, inform the crowd how you say straight ahead in Danish? No, because you're going to make fun of it. And I'm not. You I'm can't, just asking you. How okay, do I say you, straight ahead in Danish? Liu. Liu. No, it's just not even close. It's not even close. It does sound exactly like but you, yeah, so for the, you've been out For the drinking. people at home that don't know, uh, there are some letters in Norway or Norwegian and Danish, of course. And we will pronounce them as they are supposed to be pronounced. Yeah, and the, and the map names are actually based on cities here in, in the north. You have Nordland, which is a big region of Norway. You have Buda, the city. You have Meroy, where we are right now. You have Arctic, to summarize the Arctic tournament. And lastly, Salmon, to represent the Salmon industry here up north. And we are live with the very first round. Give the players a round of applause as they enter this also important match. Here we go. So, now we're heading into this first round. It looks like the top three players, Carl Jr., Brendan Binks, are really, really close to each other right now. Bren taking just a little bit of a lead, but Carl Jr. and Bren taking the exact same line there on the inside. Or road turn and now they're gonna go Ooh, Binks. very outside. Binks unfortunately hitting that outside wall. Bren maintaining the lead but Carl Jr. is literally 
less than one tenth behind him, and Kappa is right behind their tail as well. Great start for Bren, going through that zigzag part, and now carrying the speed for the end. Carl's gonna approach on the inside, but that wide setup should not result in more speed, and this could be a win for Bren. Can Kappa maybe snap for second place here? Bren will remain ahead in the position, stay. Bren with the first win. And once again, we've talked about this so many times, we cannot say it enough. Getting that first victory does something to the mental. It sets you up for a better rest of the match. Yeah, it's just a great confidence booster to start with that 10 points because now you can, you know, breathe a bit easier on stage. You know you have what it takes. You've gotten the proof. Oh, absolutely. And, it's, and it shows a statement to the other players, right, that I have the pace on this map. And as Bren said, he has practiced the other maps uh, that he felt like he was less consistent on, and I hope that's just what we saw. Yeah, let's hope for that on this map right here to talk a bit about the pace of the players. The one we have with the best pace on paper is Binks, who consistently has been putting out 105.7, 105.8 in the groups, but the other players have not played that as many matches on this, so that is something that affects the stats a little bit. Yeah, and Binks did seem to definitely be right up there with the others. He only had one unfortunate mistake, and that's all it takes sometimes to get that last, but right now he is up there on first, ahead of Carl Jr., the five-time world champion. So Binks really showing up here. When we get into the final right-hander, is he gonna be able to maintain that lead? Goes a little bit wider than Carl, is gonna have more extra speed, sets up for this right-hander a little bit differently. Is he gonna be able to maintain oh, that Carl lead? Carl speed. trying to get more speed, trying to see if he can overtake, but Binks holds up. Oh, oh but Carl Jr. with the snipe! I think what happened, I think what happened right there is a little bit of a touch on the edge of the platform. Yeah, Binks committed with just slightly too low speed for the jump, so Carl's wide line pays off as he has a clean landing, and that holds all the way to the line. Just three thousandths of a second separates them there. But it's another, or it's a 10 pointer for Carl here who also opens with a win. Yes, and I mean, it, that just goes to show that Binks definitely has that pace that we just talked about. He was ahead for the entirety of the round, and once again now, he's trying to get even a whole car length ahead of the other players. He is, his start is fast. Can he carry that through the mid part here? We know there's different setups for this next drift where some players like Tween will go wide. Binks also seems to be a proponent of that. Now he's gonna carry that throughout this long turn in the dirt, and you can see him jump back up into first, although the others have the lead momentarily. Ooh. A rare crash for Carl as he hits the outside wall there. Opportunity for Kappa as well to start with a win. And let me remind you of semifinal one, where four players started out with a win of their own on the first four rounds. We're seeing something like that here, as this time it's Kappa with great momentum into the final corner. That is an incredible amount of speed that he's holding, and he's so far ahead of his competition. All he needs to do is get enough exit speed to get this risky finish, and it does look like he does it, taking home that 10-pointer. But also Binks there made a mistake right before the finish, and he drops a past Carl Jr. into last there, so three points collected for him. But the standings will now shake up. It's Carl with 20, Brand 19, Kappa 18, and Binks with 12. But it was a very, very fast time there coming in from Kappa, and it's very nice to see him show up as well. Kappa is the player with the coming into the semifinals with the least amount of points from day one, and it's good to see him show up and still show that even though he had a little bit less points than the others, he is still here to fight, and he is definitely there to contend for the victory. And Kappa's also such a clutch player, because anytime there's a tournament like this, you know he delivers. Even if he's not the favorite on paper, he's just so good at performing in those moments where it matters, and that's how he got the 2018 title in a really stacked final against And we Tween. also Come gotta here. think about like just the sheer um, experience that some of these players have with being on stage on a LAN event like this. Yeah, I mean, and that, that is the question we have for Banks because Carl Jr. and Kappa, they've played numerous LAN events, traveled all over the world playing track mania professionally. Banks at 19 is just entering the stage now the last couple of years and here it might be the tournament where he has his first big break. Some of the other players consider him a favorite and look at the pace right now from the young French player currently leading ahead of the Giants and can he get the speed for the ending? Banks with a win. Absolutely great. It must feel great to jump into one of these competitions, face off against Carl Jr., against Kappa, against Bren, and then getting ahead of every single one of them. And such a fast time there too. That is within two tenths of the world record driven by Tween, and he does it on the stage in the most important match of his career so far. Yeah, I mean, just talking about some of the importance of this one, the prize pool is one of the highest prize pools that Trackmania has ever seen. $30,000, 
and counting from the sponsors of this event. Lovely to see. It does bring out the best in the players, and you can tell how much it means to all of them. They're giving their very best here for the prize pool and also for the audience in the crowd. It's always wonderful to hear the energy from the crowd cheering for their favorite to win the match currently. Carl Jr. and Bings fighting for that first and second place. Brent getting a little bit of extra speed outside of that oh, third turn. And, an now from Binks. and now Kappa will take that fourth place. Carl Jr. is really trying to pressure Binks here in the final right-hander. Well, one of the final right-handers, he's going a little bit wider, hopes to set up for more exit speed, but Binks maintains that lead. Who's going to get the best line here in the uphill? Binks maintains the lead right now, but Carl Jr. with a little bit more speed. Can Binks make the jump? He can! Oh, wow. Binks gets that one, and it's a tie between Carl and Bren. An exact tie, and Bren wins that one as he had more speed, I believe, across the finish line. Is that? So that's a good question, right? I now, actually don't know what the tiebreaker is. You, yeah. I'm assuming, because Bren had the comeback there, but... It's interesting to see what, because, yeah, they, they were tied to the one thousandth of a second. <laughs> And that has happened before in Trackmania history, right? It has. You, you, you've tied, and there's so many theories on what determines it. Some say it's the name, some the say... The server? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you joined the server first, so, uh, the connection here on LAN, it shouldn't be any of that. But either way, the only way to resolve a tie and make sure you don't lose it is just drive faster. And that's true. That is true. If you just drive faster, you're not going to have any tie problems. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I can't believe that that's not just what they were thinking about. Yeah, they, about. they should have figured they that out They should really have ago. thought about that, honestly. But as we enter map two here, it is actually Binks in the lead ahead of these Titans, two previous world champions he's playing against. And Bren, as you said, who's been in seven Serie Cup finals, which in Trackmania holds really high merit on oh, going to the world that's championship that's too. So, so these are some big names that he's currently in ahead of. Absolutely. Like Sera we, had, we had Serrator come on the show here earlier today to play the streamer competition and the 2v2. And uh, he's the one who made these Serrator Cups that you're talking about. And they're some of the biggest tournaments that ever existed in Trackmania. They are. And now that we're going over, over to a bit more of a raw pace map where it's mostly decided by your turns back and forth, how many hundreds can you gain on your opponents in each corner. That's what really characterizes Absolutely. this map. No weird jumps, no weird tricks. This is a map where those players experience, those yeah. veterans that have been around, it might shine through because they really know how to optimize everything. Virgil, tell me, if this, if this map is just all about raw pace, are the others about cooked pace? Oh, like, yeah, I get, I get the line you're going <laughs> for. It is pretty cooked, the lines they do on melee and other terrible dad jokes we can spare it ourselves is, no, from. No, no, it was an amazing dad joke. All of the kids love it. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Anyways, first round up on Urlam, we had Kappa drive a sub one minute in the warm-up, and I think sub one minute times are going to be oh, what's there. required for the win. We saw Tween be able to do that in the first semifinal, and here Kappa is trying to do what his old friend and teammate did to join him in that final. Maybe he can make it happen. Dropping onto the grass here, Binks and Bren with a lot of speed. The two French players re-inheriting the lead as they go down the plastic now. Who's going to get the best line? Looks like Bren is going to be able to push up that hill, but Binks will take that lead before the last drift. All of them within just five hundredths of a second. Who's going to have the best last jump here to take the ten points? Binks leading by couple with a better jump, perhaps a more inside line. Binks takes that, and it is a sub one minute. Binks extending his lead, and importantly enough, the second place player that was right behind Binks was Bren, and he got fourth. So now Binks is kind of putting a little bit of a gap between him and Bren, 42 to 34. 42 to 34, and then look further, 32 and 30. It's so close right now. As we go to 120, they're about a third of the way there. Yes, as we enter the next round, all of the players, they're going to be incredibly close in the start. Copper trailing a little bit behind, but that is nothing that he can't oh. come back with yet. And Bren with a slight mistake, trying to jump as low as possible. Unfortunately, that makes his back right wheel touch the wall, and Binks is now alone in the lead. Yeah, there's even players that will try to land on the road border there. That flat part on top of the road border, you can touch that with the wheels and get an even earlier landing but he also paid the risk of just crashing it completely. He's out of there, Binks looking for another 10 points here. That would be a third win in a row, potentially. Carl Jr. 
coming alive here, trying to challenge and get up from third to maybe second place in the overall standings. Kappa close by as well. Good speed for Kappa here to maybe get up to second place. It's very close there, but Binks looks to have a solid grip on this lead, and he's gonna get another 10 points. It did sound from the interview or the, the question we had with Binks here that he was really like downplaying himself a little bit. He's really showing up right now. But I think he doesn't want to take anything for granted. He has the preparation, he has the practice, he has the pace, but he's not going to think he's made it through. He's not going to think the job is done before the match is played. He's going about this one round at a time, just trying to do what he, he practiced, what he memorized. And so far, it's working out brilliantly. Yeah. 52 points so far. And I, I, I do think you're right. You should never assume that you have the upper hand on players of this caliber, no matter how much you've practiced. But right now, he is once again in the lead ahead of Kappa and Carl Jr. Brent about one tenth behind, but Binks maintaining that lead. A nice inside jump there from Binks, but Kappa really trying to push that exit speed, mm. almost making it up to first place, but not quite getting there. Trying to get the inside line here on the plastic. Kappa trying to push, but Bing still has the first place. And there really isn't any magic to it. There's no secret ingredient. He's just gaining this time one turn at a time by gaining a little bit, a couple of hundreds here and there. It looks like it's gonna be another win for Binks. If he sticks that landing, he is beating Titans right now. That is impressive. And if we, if we put our thoughts back to the first time we saw this map uh, yesterday, was called Junior that did a five victory sweep on this map. And now, Binks is fighting against Carl Jr. and doing the opposite. He is. I mean, he, I mean he's beating Carl at doing Carl Jr. things so far. It's crazy to watch. Often you will see Carl run away with a match like this if he gets momentum. But so far, they have stopped that. Carl is just on level with everyone else. And uh, it can be hard for him to get off the ground if he doesn't get that dominating start. Absolutely, it's always difficult to reset your mindset once you don't have the perfect start. But Carl Jr. has so much experience in this uh, section of Trekmania, so I'm sure that he can come back stronger than ever on the next map. Or maybe even here, as we see him in the leap of Kappa with so much speed, trying to get the inside line. Does he have it? Almost getting up to second place. Bren also fighting there for first. They're neck and neck. Three players here fighting as we get into the last couple of drifts before the ending. Carl Jr. and Bren in the lead. Kappa trying to fight here from the back. Bren overtaking Carl Jr. Who's gonna have the most speed coming into the ending? Bren in the lead. Can Carl Jr. snap? But Bren takes it home. Oh! Five thousandths of a second, but all the four players were within a tenth as well. And they were all sub one minute. Binks got fourth with a 59.94. You never see that. that. That should win the rounds. Yeah, that is incredible pace from all the players. And none of them made any, any major mistake. They're all driving incredibly good lines. And as you've said, one tenth of a second, 0 0.1 separating four players after a minute of driving. That was phenomenal. And we still have one more round to be played here on Urlam. Carl Jr. leading this one, trying to get a win on the board. He hasn't gotten one all map long on this, where as previously he would get five in a row here in first, coupled with a lot of speed on that exit. And it will carry all the way to the turn here where Carl still remains about 500s ahead. Binks challenging a lot of speed down that hill. Now can he set up in time for the plastic? Kappa dropping it off to the side. Mm. It's gonna go very wide as a consequence and it will not have the speed. I think it's gonna be either Binks or Carl to get this 10 pointer unless Kappa can get a very inside line around this corner. Will it be Binks or will it be Carl up first onto the jump? Looks like Carl Jr. will take the last round here. But importantly as well, Binks did get second place. He's been very, very consistent on this map and also on the last map, still maintaining that lead with 71 points. Absolutely true. He's getting closer and closer to 120 as we look towards the third map. Now, this is where the map pack changes a little bit. We started with the pace of a map, so now we're going into more difficult territory. We have the ice slide here in Arctic before we look towards Mele and Buda, the very technical yeah. tracks with difficult obstacles.
So this map, Arctic, is the first map that introduces the surface ice. It is indeed the only map that introduces the surface ice. And the players have had map or have a lot of trading with it, this exact ice turn, because you can save upwards of a tenth of a second from the exit speed if you do it well. And in the group stage, to update you guys a bit about past performances here, Binks and Carl Jr. are the two fastest players in the entire group stage on this map consistently. They both put out times of around one minute and one second, 0.7, but their best times are one minute, one second, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and that beats a lot of people's best times, and they did them in a match. So Binks and Carl here are the two favorites to do well and might look to extend their lead of the match. Yeah, absolutely, and right here in the warm-up, we do see Binks in the lead, so if that has anything to show for it, he might be able to even extend the, the, the points of the match here even further ahead of his opponents, which would be incredible. Now, the other players backstage have talked about Binks performing really, really well under the time attack and before the tournament even started, so a lot of them put their money on Binks, but he definitely is showing why they do it. Yeah, he is. The world record on this map, one minute, one second, Point 19 set by Massa just earlier today backstage. Yes. Maybe we can get close to that. The way they're playing right now, I certainly wouldn't doubt it. Let's get into the first round of Arctic. Absolutely virtual. Right here we see the players going for one jump and then a left-handed drift. Ooh, the cheeky. better they set up this drift, the more exit speed they're going to have. And we see the first mistake of Arctic as Bren hits the right wall. Unfortunately, he's going to be a little bit behind but he can still capitalize if somebody slides out in the ice slide. He can. That's one of the most mistake-heavy sections we see, but also this quarter pipe jump coming up. Thanks with a small lead before it. They're trying to aim for that ledge up there. Land with good grip and carry the speed. Banks will have the lead after it. Carl Jr. dropping two positions in that one jump. And now, let's see who gets the best exit speed on the ice. Can Kappa keep the grip down the hill? He will. And he will keep up with Binks as they go into the final couple of turns here. Binks looking for another 10 points here. They are definitely perfecting those dirt lines because they're going so close to the so wall. Close right and now, now between... Binks is in the lead, but Cole Jr. tries to overtake Kappa. Is he going to be able to do so? Kappa with more exit Ooh. speed and does maintain that second place. Amazing ending there for Kappa to secure a six. He really needed those as he is in last in the overall standings. That will do well for him. And so, the crowd is on his side as well. He loves to hear it. Absolutely. So I do want to try to see, once the players, they go into this dirt, these dirt sections, I do want the crowd and the players at home or the people at home to watch the back wheels. Oh, we have Kappa with a mistake in the start. That's a difficult one to come back from. But take a look at the outside line here that Bren is going to go for once we get into the dirt section that is going to come up right here because it is so close to the wall. Look at this. Look at the right wheels. And you might all the way up, and then the left wheels, and all the way up. I wonder why are they doing that? Why not just drive on the inside line? And that is because the less you drift on dirt, the more speed you will preserve, and the more speed you will generate. And so by staying on the outside line, you carry more speed. It makes sense. But what a race we have on our hands up the outside line. Look at the back wheel, just barely dodging that wall. For them, it is just like. Child's play, it's not hard at all. Carl Jr. staying alive as Binks has hit the wall. Can Bren deny this win from Carl, or is it going to be Carl pushing through the last corner? Carl Jr. gets a 10 points. Carl Jr., definitely one of the crowd favorites, as you can hear you right can here. Tell. You can tell that the crowd does enjoy seeing Carl Jr. get that first place, but he still has some work to do to overtake Binks, as Binks is on 85 points. Yeah, and it's not often you see players be so far out of Carl in a match. Uh, memories doesn't even serve me right to remember. No, I can't the remember. The previous either. time someone was uh, leading like this. Mime got very close in the World Championship Finals this summer. Oh, he we, did. We Absolutely. We did know that Carl got that one, but Carl has been a dominant force in the Trackmania esports scene for the past decade, really winning what there is to win out there. Here in Melee, though, Players are giving him a really tough challenge for it. Up the quarter pipe. Looks like it is Binks in the lead. Carl Jr. currently last. Speaks to the level that we are playing at right now. As through the ice slide, Carl Jr. gets a great turn. Passing Kappa. Now the two French players remain ahead. And he's going to hit the wall on the outside. Unfortunate there. Binks ahead of Bren now in the 1v1. 
and they're gonna be very close to each other. Brent taking a more inside line, getting a more direct approach towards this grass section, but goes a little bit wider. Is that gonna set him up for a better turn? It is not, and Binks gets more exit speed as he jumps into the finish. And what a time, Janik. 0.47 beats the best time he drove on this map in the group stage. It is one of his oh. best maps, and 10 more points puts him at 95. He is so close to breaching that 100-point barrier, and then he's just 20, he's just 25 points as of right now away from hitting that finalist position. And he still has two more rounds to play on Arctic here. Oh, oh, as we say that, unfortunate start. Kappa had to deal with that one round. Bren had that problem as well, and now we look to the other three players to see who's going to win it. Maybe Kappa here up with Carl Jr can get an important 10 points to come back in the match. But it's fun to see the players, like, at the start, it doesn't look like it's that dangerous. But it's because these players make some of the very, very difficult parts of Trackmania look so trivial. Yeah, they just make it look easy, because yeah. it's so refined that you don't consider it as difficult. Here, looks like a one versus one again. Kappa and Carl Jr. going for the 10-pointer down the hill, and now they need to look for that uphill approach. Carl Jr. Getting the back wheel, this time away from the wall. Kappa going on the inside line here. Carl will have more exit speed towards the grass. This small drift tap approach there sets him up better. Kappa with a better approach for this last turn, but Carl Jr. carries more speed, and Carl Jr. will take 10 very important points. And Binks, very importantly, was able to also finish, even with a mistake there in the start, taking home the three points. That puts him just under the 100 point threshold he needs at least three rounds now to get that finalist position he does but he still has one more here we go to melee which might be a great map for him too but it's one that i think would also suit carl jr and kappa the best as it's very difficult to survive runs consistently there and they really thrive in those difficult environments but if we take a look at the scoreboard this is more um, more fragmented than the last time. Like, all the players, they're kind of like 10 points between each of them. They are, and the other one was close all the way, but, you know, the races have been incredible. It's just, I think, a marriage of Binks and Carl really pushing the lever here and going into overdrive. So we see through the ice slide, Brad now getting a really good ice slide for himself, needs to get some points as after that strong start, it hasn't been that great of a follow-up, but here he's looking for it. Together with Carl, Binks still a little bit ahead. It's a tenth that they need to catch up in two corners. Will be hard against Binks when he's playing the way he is right now, but the second place is still up for grabs. Carl, maybe a bit more speed. Bren going wide for that approach. Oh, he takes it home. Binks winning that final one. He increases uh, his lead. Yeah, Carl. he increases his lead. He's now going to be out 108 points, and very, very likely he's, or he is going to be finalist on the next map. I think so, yeah. He has to be 12 points. Yeah, right. He gets all last places, yeah. That's why I said likely, because I don't want to, I don't want to make him not finish like four times in a yeah, row. Yeah, <laughs> you can't curse this one. Not the way he's playing. We're on melee. This is one of the most difficult maps, and we can see it here in the warm-up once more, just why it's so hard to drive. But essentially, the margin for error is smaller than ever here. Absolutely. Just take a look at this upcoming drift that is going to be here. So the players are going to set up for a jump, and then they're going to turn. So right here. So they're jumping, going over this slight edge, setting up for a right-hander. And then right after this, they're going to set up for an early left-handed drift already right here. And that drift is going to propel them in towards this slight Right there, right between the tiny gap between the, the tiny pillars. gap between the pillars. They're really, they really have to thread the needle. They're aiming for a target there that they can't even see. Because when you let go of the drift, you're already on the line towards it. It's a blind it. drift. That's yep. what it is, and they just have to get the feeling. And uh, with enough hours on this map, they can kind of tell. But still, it's just so hard to do it consistently. You see a lot of mistakes here, but hopefully, when the warm up concludes, we will have it all ironed out, and we can get five clean rounds. Oh, absolutely. The warm up. Uh, so there's two ways to do the warm-up. Either you do the entire map clean, or you just try to go through the entire map in the warm-up, or you take the, that last one minute of practice to practice that one section of the map where you think, this is, this is what I need to practice. Yeah, and like here, if you make a mistake in the end, you still get time to, you know, respawn, try it again a few times, exactly. and then we begin. What a match it's been so far. Man, I give it up for the players one more time. We get into map four and the hardest map yet.
Yes, as we see, we can take a quick look at the players' scores. 108 for Binks, 91 for Carl Jr., 79 for Bren, and 67 for Kappa. Ooh, oh, we mistake already for Binks. have one mistake. Bren is also kind of far behind, so it's going to be between Carl Jr. and Kappa. Let's take a look at the two players, the two OGs and world champions. Yeah, Kappa, the 2018 champion, Carl Jr. won championship just one month ago his fifth world champion title both of them though no strangers to situations like this high pressure you know Kappa being in 67 points needs these wins right now trying to find more speed in the uphill will actually have it with the dirt line here designs your outcome for the ending and Carl Jr. should have enough speed to hold the fort should have enough speed to get the 10 points and yeah oh, oh. saying that he makes a mistake and Kappa is there to snipe it, but Carl will at least get six points. Carl still gets a very important second place and Binks pushes himself up to 111 points, which means that if he gets first place, he's now going to be able to push himself up into finalist position. Just one win is what he needs here. And traditionally, this map has been the best for Carl Jr., whose average time's under 58 seconds. That's what you're looking for, the 57 oh. next. So, and following that win, Kappa makes a small mistake in the start. That is him down into last for now, as Carl Jr. again drives clean. And talking to the players backstage, one thing they said about Carl is, you will not really see him make many mistakes. And in such a hard map as this, he thrives because others are going to crash. That's the thing, right? Consistency, once again, will prevail. And Carl Jr. is really showing it, but he has not gotten this victory yet because Bren is pushing. He's really attacking here from behind and not Great giving line. Carl Jr. a single break. Such an inside line coming in from Bren. Is he going to have the extra speed to overtake here on the ending? Carl Jr. is going to maintain that lead. We it's all up to the ending. Unfortunately, Bren with a small mistake and Binks will overtake for second place. Yeah, and Bren has to go for the safe finish here. It could be Kappa getting third as well. Uh, Bren will get that third place and at least one point saved. But a great time from Carl as well. 57-78 is close to the world record. Two tenths of the world record. That was also an important mistake uh, in terms of Binks's points because Binks is now guaranteed to get finalist after this round. He will get it regardless and no one else is going to be finalist at the same time. Exactly. Just needs to finish, but also a good opportunity to deny the other some points with a fast time. If he claims the 10 points, then there's only the 6, 4, and the 3 that the others have to split between themselves. So he's going to go all in here. Kappa missing the drift just a little bit. Puts him down into last, but Bren and Carl and Binks are right there, and nothing's decided yet for the top spots. Absolutely not, and Binks is really, really trying to go for it right here. Oh, Bren getting a little bit of air time. That's going to slow him down. Binks is now in the lead. He's really trying to push out, make sure that Carl Jr. is not going to get as many points as possible. He does not want Carl Jr. to get finalist position as fast as he can get it. And Binks is now oh, in the lead. Carl speed. Jr. with more speed. Is he going to be able to overtake the speed resets a little bit right here? Binks is still in the lead. One more jump separating him from that first place, and he's going to get it. Oh, important 10 there for Binks. Holds Carl Jr. off a little bit longer. At this point, Carl will need to win the next round to get finalist himself. And also, he denies Bren and Kappa. They have to get 30 more points to get to finalist. And Even if Carl gets there, Bren could, Binks could still maybe close it out. And that's the thing. Now Binks has shown us that he has the capabilities of getting a win on this map versus Carl Jr., Bren and Kappa. So he could theoretically, very possibly, take home that first place in the semi-final. All eyes on him now. Let's see how he drives with the red badge. Just needs one final win and he's in the grand finale against Tween and also one of the players that will be joining here together with Pac. Pac. It's going to be crazy if he can get there at only 19 years old and playing the biggest tournament of his career. But right now the other three players in this match have him beat. He needs to find a good end here, Binks, to close it out in this round. Yeah, Binks needs to push out every single corner right now. He has nothing to lose currently, but he's only 16 hundreds away from that first player, Carl Jr. Is he going to be able to overtake Carl Jr.? If he makes a mistake, he could get it, but Binks makes a mistake. Is Carl Jr. going to take home that victory? He is, and now we have a double finalist situation. Double finalist, and what a time from Carl Jr. 57-7 is the fastest time we've seen in a match on this map in the tournament. That is incredible. And now with a double finalist situation, both Brennan and Kappa haven't reached that 100 
point barrier yet. And this is going to be very interesting and a very tall order for Brandon Kappa to deny these two players that many rounds in a row. And Carl is coming into this last round of Melee with such momentum. If Brand could just get to the next round right now on Buda, it would be perfect for him. That's his best map for last. But he needs the others to not have closed out their final attempts when he gets there. To have that chance right now, Binks in first, Kappa trailing a little bit behind, but all four are in the mix. As we see the second half here onto the dirt, gotta get these transitions right better than ever now. Slide bump for Carl as Bren gets closer and closer. Bing still a car length or two ahead. This could be the moment he's been waiting for. The last round he was in fourth, he needed to push. Now he's in first, going down the hill up towards the finish here. Still in first, still beating these Titan players. At 19 years old, can he get the ending right? Carl Jr. is there to challenge, but Binks still has the lead. Last jump for Binks to make history! Carl Jr. snipes! And Carl takes it. Carl takes the first spot in the Grand Finals by two thousandths of a second. Unbelievable. What a performance there by Carl, and that just goes to show what those two to three extra kilometers per hour can do for you. That's what it's about in the Trickmania Grand League playoffs. He lost the finals against Mata by one thousand. Here yeah. he wins the semifinal by two thousands. It's a game of margins. He plays it on the right side this time, and he can rest assured he will be playing for the trophy. He will be playing for the trophy. The third player to enter the Grand Finals is Carl Jr. It is, and we will have one more player there. Now, interestingly, we are on Buda. This map is difficult. It's a great map for Bren. It's his best map. So even though he is at 99 points right now, he has a great chance here to deny Binks the win and potentially claim the spot himself. Absolutely. But Bren, once again, he has to deny three times in a row for, to be able to come back right now. And Binks only needs one single victory. now. The, the question is what Binks' pace is on this map and if it's good enough to be able to overtake the other players consistently. So a little bit of information about the pace here. The world record is a 56-23 by Tween. Now, Bren, in 20 rounds of play on this, have driven a 56-39 as his best time, and his average is a 56-85. Binks, his best time is a 59-64 in a match, in 10 rounds played. So, Bren is best time is two times faster and his average almost matches brings brings his best up until now and that's the thing like Bren does have the option to deny throughout this match and still get into the grand finals himself the problem for Bren is he actually needs at least three rounds to get to finalist and then yeah. he needs that fourth round to win so it's a long journey there Binks only needs one mistake one blunder from both Coppa and Bren to secure this win and join the others in the finals Let's see if it does happen. Binks currently with a great start, fighting with Bren for that first place, and he does have it right now. Bren with a little bit more exit speed, but they're gonna be neck and neck once again. Bren oh, with a mistake, Bren mistake, and the biggest contender to take it away from Binks just made a mistake, well. and Kappa now also made a mistake, and Binks now just needs to be able to put it, put the rest of this map into his pocket, see if he can make it Happen. It's such a big gap here, but the pressure is on. The keyboard taps are coming through. Shaky hands just needs to make sure that he gets into that finish, that he doesn't miss this grass shortcut here across the bump. Gets the landing right. One more drift and one more jump. And Binks, you are in the grand finals. If you land this, he's in. He's in. <laughs> Binks and Carl Jr. will be joining Tween and Pack in the finals of the Arctic Gaming Experience. And what a match they displayed. What a match indeed. Some big upsets, some incredible pace. Let's go ahead and take a word with the players. <laughs> Carl and Binks, please join us up here on the stage to tell us a little bit about how that was. Yes, starting with you, Carl Jr. You're winning that semifinal. It was a hard-fought battle against Binks. How does it feel to see such a young talent here come up on uh, on the scene? He's he's too good. He's too good. <laughs> he'll be such a great player in the upcoming years. Well, he is already, but he he'll do so much in the game for sure. He's way too good. And now a little bit about your experience too. I mean, it was 
incredibly close, but you inched out that win by two thousands. It must feel good to be in the finals now. And looking ahead, do you think you could take it all here? With a bit of luck, I can. <laughs> With yeah. a bit of luck, yes. Yeah, I, I, I can do this if I play good. And now looking over to the fans at home, do you have anything you want to say to them before the grand final? Any words you want to th thank the fans well, with? Because we've th heard them in the yeah, crowd. Yeah, thank you so much. Without you, I wouldn't have uh, in the, been in the grand final, guys. So thank you so much. And, and now, Binks, if you would come up here. Bings, your words before the semi-final sounded a little shaky. It sounded like you knew what you were up against, but you performed so well. What went through your mind as you got further and further in the lead? Uh, I was really happy. <laughs> Be, um, being like 20 points uh, behind Carl Jr., it's amazing. So... <laughs> 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 that is amazing. What is your feeling now going into this grand final as you see you have the pace to, to beat some of these veteran players? Uh, I don't know if, um, if, uh, if I will perform like this in the final, but okay. I, I hope. I hope so too. I <laughs> think sure it was an amazing play. So as well. Do you have anything to say to the people at home or to the people in crowd? Uh, thank you for all to, to be here. Uh, Norway is amazing, so I'm really happy to be here. Can we have a hand here for Bings?